and I will also scare the Pakistanis. Whoop, what's that? I will notify that Pakistani viewership has gone down. Everyone Sangram Sadi Nato Sangram. Today, we will be talking about 1971. What do I mean, 1971? Well, I'm not going to talk about the entire thing that was happening in 1971. Because it was a tumultuous time, to say the least. Cold War, nuclear weapons, uh, Cuba. Oh my God, there was so much happening. And the collapse of the British Empire. But what we're focusing on today is the Bangladeshi Revolution of 1971. We have to go all the way back to, well, 1905. Why? Well, because that was the time that Governor General, or actually Viceroy of British India, George Curzon, planted a seed in the dumb minds of Muslim leaders and made them believe that one day they could have their own Muslim state. And those dumb Muslim leaders even let the seeds sprout so much in their heads that only one year after Bengal was split, they created the Muslim League, a league based solely on partitioning the Muslim parts of British and Raj from, well, the Hindu parts of the British Raj. Bengal was reunified in 1911 but the damage had been done. The seed had sprouted enough that it was now a full-on political damn movement. The Muslim League now had some power, but well, not enough to topple the British. How do you think the British got a worldwide empire in the first place? Hmm? So, well, what they did, what the Muslim League did, was they forced a deal with the Indian National Congress, INC, headed by Mahatma Gandhi who himself attended the meeting called the Lucknow Pact, where the Muslim League agreed to protest for more self-autonomy. But the India, well, the INC, would agree to, well, partition it against religious laws. By that, I mean that there would be a lot of representation for religious minorities, hint, hint, Muslims. The splitting up of India was a real prospect. And even the British began to take it seriously with the Simla meeting. So, now everybody had this idea of a new religious state called Pakistan in their heads. And so, what the British did was they took a big, big map, then they took a pen, and they drew scribbles all around and called that the new borders of India. Uh, via religious lines. Mamma mia, that's how you make some conflict. So... Um, yes, that was huge for India. That turning point, just the splitting up of India, was huge in its own right. Because, well, the formation of Pakistan meant a lot of immigration crisis. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. From 200,000 to several million people died of the new dominions. So, yeah, you can tell people weren't that happy. So, the British didn't really have any more power anymore. They just left the Indian and Pakistanis to their own tools. Said, here you go, take this. And, well, the thing was, the Dominion of Pakistan had two exclaves. One was called West Pakistan, and the other was called East Pakistan. And while well, East Pakistan and West Pakistan had nothing in common except religion. I mean, religion was why they were together in the first place. You can tell that things weren't going to be real right. Because you can never have a state based on solely religion. It won't work out. And in this case, yes, Pakistan's state didn't work out. It co collapsed the two exclaves. And the two exclaves went their separate ways. So uh, let that serve as a lesson to you. Why did East Pakistan secede? Well, this was because of two things that West Pakistan did, along with the third thing that well, we will discuss after these two, that really fueled the spark inside East Bengal. So let's 
go over the first issue between the West Pakistanis and the East Pakistanis. Well, the first issue was the language issue. Immediately after the two dominions were created, well, the Pakistani leader pushed for Urdu to be the national language, giving Bangladesh uh, well, no representation. The Bengalis weren't chosen as an official language, although 58.4% of the population spoke it, and only 7.6% of the population had, well, Urdu as their native language. So it didn't really make sense. And this, these Bengali protesters from 1948 to 1952 became a full-on movement, a political movement. And while the second issue was discrimination, here and there and everywhere, West Pakistanis were getting more jobs, more positions in the army, better education, well, they were getting everything. It was like the 1960s, discrimina or 1960s style discrimination of the whites and blacks, except this time with the West Pakistanis and Bengal. Now the third thing what, that led up to all of this, that led up to all the gasoline that had built up being exploded, that was Operation Searchlight. What was Operation Searchlight? Well, Searchlight was not an attempt to catch everybody using Chrome Incognito and look through their search history. Instead, it was an attempt to silence the Bangladeshi protesters using violence. Well, the Pakistanis, they did genocide. They killed a lot of activists, nationalists, and well, and Bengali pride people. They killed a lot of thinkers just so they could keep the exclave. Now at this point, people can probably see what was about to happen. But while well, nobody expected that what would happen would actually make a change. The Death Revolution of 1971 was actually surprisingly short. It was nine months from March 1971 to December 1971 till well, Pakistan eventually gave up because they were clearly losing. Now you might be thinking, how can such a big exclave lose to such a, a small exclave that was less well fed, had less jobs, uh, well had less strength? There were two reasons. One was that well, the revolutionary team that led Bangladesh to independence was well helped by India. They made a deal with India and India didn't really like Pakistan anyways. So, India just shattered Pakistan's arm. And the second, which Bunga Bandhu's right here, leadership. And that leads us to 1971. Because now, in March 1971, clover, clover, nothing really did, nobody did, really did anything. Sure, there were some army plans gathered together their army, but nothing really much happened. The thing started happening from June to July 1971. A few air raids, a few battles, nothing that bad because while well, the two exclaves were separated by a thousand miles of Indian territory, but they definitely still fought. And well, Bangladesh and India were winning. They were shattering the Pakistani forces. And so Pakistan eventually had to surrender from well August to December, Pakistan saw the bad situation it was in. And so Pakistan well put up the white flag, started the surrender process. And so that was the creation of the new state, the land of Bengali, otherwise known as Bangladesh. And keep in mind that this man this man was the father of Bangladesh. Thank you, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Zoe Vangla, Zoe Vanga Vandu. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.